Hello! Moving from one place to another is of cardinal importance. Our ancestors used to travel over long distances in search of water, food or shelter. Later people started to build fixed settlements and they started to travel to trade their goods. The population of these settlements progressively grew larger. Hence, the traffic within the boundaries of the settlements grew denser and denser. The use of horses and carriages meant that eventually traffic had to be somehow regulated for its flow to be unimpeded. Some sort of rules had to be established. How was this done? Next, on Random History. In ancient times, people walked on roads on whichever side they felt like, much like we do nowadays. However, it seems that one side of the street was preferable for the average pedestrian rather than the other. Of course, we must point out that written sources on the matter are rather scarce, so everything said on the subject might seem plausible, but still should be taken with a grain of salt. Traveling in ancient times was not a risk-free activity. In roads, especially outside the larger settlements, such as villages or cities, one could come across some less than pleasant characters. Looters could be lurking in bushes or behind trees, or even walking the road up and down to find their next victim. So meeting an unknown person coming the other way was something best done defensively. 90% of the population was and still is right-handed. Thus, it has been hypothesized that the people prioritized the keep left rule. This way, the person coming towards the traveler would pass him from the right side. Now, let's assume that this person was to have malign intents. Then the traveler would be able to promptly defend himself by grabbing his dagger or sword with his dominant right hand. People on horseback, such as knights, seem to have been following the keep left rule for the same reasons. Seemingly, the keep left rule was ubiquitous in the Middle Ages. The year is 1300. It is the first jubilee. Rome is about to be inundated by pilgrims. It has been written that Pope Boniface VIII decreed that the keep left rule was to be kept by all travelers. It was wise of the Pontifex Maximus to do so. There might have been as many as 200,000 pilgrims jamming the streets of the Eternal City. It has to be noted, though, that this story is not backed by any official documentation. The Romans were the first to build a dense network of roads spanning throughout their vast empire. So it was to be expected that the first and only archaeological evidence relating to the habits of travelers would come from them. In 1998, a Roman quarry was discovered in Swindon, England. A road was built for the passage of carts that transported the mined stone. The grooves on the road that were on the left side were significantly deeper than the ones on the right side. Hence, heavy loaded with stone carts leaving the quarry used to stay on the left. Empty carts, on the other hand, moving towards the quarry, stayed on the right. We have no tangible clues pertaining to the reasons for the specific choice of the Romans. One could assume that the keep left rule was started as a sort of a safety habit and became customary on all Roman roads. The first regulation of one side or the other was traced to the Chinese bureaucracy in 1100 BC. That is more than 3,000 years ago. It is found in the so-called Book of Rights. It is practically a collection of texts of somewhat uncertain origin. These texts describe the social forms, administration and ceremonial rights. There it was stated, the right side of the road is for men, the left side for women and the center for carriages. This rule was applied only to the wide official roads. Still, it was more concerned with protocol rather than with the avoidance of head-on collisions. 
jump ahead in time little more than 2500 years in 1669 London. An order requiring a man being posted on London Bridge was issued by the administration of the city of London. This man was charged with ensuring that all cards going to keep on one side and all cards coming to keep on the other side. Almost a hundred years later, in 1765, the movement on London Bridge was legislated as the London Bridge Act. It dictated that all carriages passing over the said bridge from London shall go on the east side thereof. Practically, this meant that carriages going south should remain on the east, that is, the left hand side by direction of travel. Here we may have the first statutory requirement for left hand traffic. Eventually, this law was incorporated into the Highway Act of 1835 and adopted throughout the Empire. There are two countries that spearheaded the initial transition from left-hand to right-hand traffic, the United States of America and France. It seems that right-hand travel predominated in colonial America from the time of the earliest settlements. The wagons transporting grain in the New World were massive. A team of two, four or even six horses were needed to pull such wagons. There was no seat for the driver, so he used to ride the left rear horse. He was holding the reins with the left hand and the long black snake whip with the dominant right hand. These drivers preferred to travel to the right. They were thus able to check that they did not get too close for comfort to the wagons coming the other way. The heavy Conestoga wagon was introduced in around 1750. It was large enough to transport loads up to six tons. Historians agree that it provided a major impetus for right-hand driving in the United States. The first formal rule dictating right-hand drive as compulsory was adopted by the state of Pennsylvania in 1792. It has been suggested that this was also a way to abolish the British laws after the revolution. Anyhow, by the Civil War, right-hand travel was followed in all the states. France is considered as the first European country to adopt right-hand travel. The reasons for this choice are somewhat unclear. Tangible historical relative evidence is scant at best, so all theories are not to be taken at face value. Before the French Revolution, aristocrats were supposed to travel on the left of the road. Commoners were, on the other hand, forced to travel over to the right. After the revolution, however, aristocrats thought it wise to keep a low profile, so they used to choose to travel with the low classes on the right. Right-hand traffic seems to have been officially adopted in France at the end of the 18th century as an anti-royalist measure. Other theories involve who else? Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon was an astute tactician and strategist. It is said that he issued an order which went contrary to the military traditions. In the beginning of the 19th century, armies used to attack the enemy's left flank, but the famous Corsican had his troops attack the enemy's right flank. This took the French army's opponents by surprise and sent them in disarray. This tactic is supposed to have permitted Napoleon to win several battles, including Austerlitz. After having conquered a good chunk of Europe, he imposed right-hand traffic in all the lands he controlled. It has been hypothesized that he did that in order to oppose the stubborn and still undefeated British. As we have seen, the classical tendency of people was to travel on the left. This changed in the United States for practical reasons, namely to facilitate the circulation of the huge wagons pulled by teams of horses. The change in France happened for reasons which are murky at best. In any case, many countries changed from left-hand to right-hand travel when they fell under the control of Napoleon. The large carriages were not suitable for the narrow roads in the British Isles. Furthermore, Britons were never defeated by Napoleon's Grand Armée. Hence, Britain did not change to right-hand travel because there was no motive 
to do so. Furthermore, no changing was also an act of defiance to Napoleon's rule. It's worth mentioning, however, that in the 1960s the UK considered changing to right-hand travel, but the cost of the change was deemed prohibitive and the idea was dropped. Countries conquered by Napoleon kept right-hand travel even after his defeat. During the 19th century, most European countries opted for right-hand travel, however, no uniformity existed, not even in the same country. There were some territories in some countries which had adopted right-hand travel, whereas others in the same country left-hand travel. In the 20th century, a movement towards harmonization of road rules in Europe emerged. As a result, a gradual shift began from traveling on the left to the right. The last Europeans to change from left hand to right hand were the Swedes. In 1955, the change from left to right was rejected in a referendum in the Scandinavian country. But the government ordered the change to take place overnight on September 3, 1967, initially causing some difficulty. The colonies of the British Crown were by law required to travel on the left. After the end of colonial rule, many of these countries changed to right-hand travel. About 35% of all countries nowadays drive on the left. It comes as no surprise that most of them are ex-British colonies. A notable exception is Japan. However, the British were involved in that choice too. In 1872, left-hand drive was officially adopted in the country of the rising sun. That was the year when Japan's first railway was introduced, built with technical aid from the British. As expected, trains and trams were driven on the left-hand side. This rule was imposed by Japan in Korea. Both North and South Korea switched to right-hand travel after their liberation from Japan. In the United States, in the late 19th century, drivers of light horse-drawn vehicles traveled on the right. They sat on the right as well. This was to avoid the roadside ditches. The first automobiles were built in the 1890s. Initially, instead of the wheel, they used to have a centrally located rudder, also called tiller. The steering wheel was introduced in 1898. This mechanism had to be located either on the right or on the left side of the vehicle. Cars were considered as motorized wagons, thus most car makers opted to put the wheel on the curbside, on the right, that is. Most American cars produced before 1910 had the steering wheel on the right side, although intended for right side driving. In 1908, Ford produced the Model T, which had the steering wheel put on the left. Henry Ford argued that with the steering on the right and right-hand drive, the passenger was obliged to get out on the street side and walk around the car. Furthermore, he affirmed that steering from the left, the driver is able to see even the wheels of the other car and easily avoids danger. By 1915, other car manufacturers followed suit due to Model T's immense popularity. And this was the story behind traveling on the right or on the left. Do you have anything to add? We would love hearing from you. In the description below, you can find some resources for further reading. If you feel so inclined, please like, share and subscribe in order not to miss out on our future videos. And if you have any suggestions for subjects you would like us to dwell into, note them in the comments below. Until the next time, keep learning!